to the world. Subscribe now to the Hot 97 YouTube channel. It's Ebro in the morning with Laura Stiles and Rosenberg. Ebro, Laura Rosenberg. Weekday mornings right here. Thank you for logging in. Today we're joined by writer, director, Nate Parker. New film, American Whoop. Skin, available everywhere. I watched it on Amazon Prime. Um, but definitely go check it out. A serious film about really present day America. Uh, the dynamic between black men specifically in the police, the lack of accountability of police and policing, um, and just the even even the movie. And this is I salute you. You cover so many different things in short order, right? So uh, without giving away too much, uh, Nate. First of all, how you doing? Thanks for joining the program. Brother, I'm fantastic. Always great to be here with you, bro. Yeah, man. Great to see you. Um, so the main character, his name is Lincoln Jefferson. I want to get back to why you chose that name. And, you know, I, I, there's definitely things in this film where you um, elude and, and, and show the relationship between black people and their connection to America and how this right. nation has... Um, forsaken that relationship disrespected that relationship disrespected us and then mm -hmm. there's the other layer where this main character is also a two-time uh you know iraq uh military uh marine right mm -hmm. yeah uh, which is a whole other layer of not only being a black man but now also being a veteran being mm -hmm. disrespected then there's the other layer of this black man who's you know comes home from his military tours and um, doesn't have work mm -hmm. and ends up working at a school so that his son can go to a better school. Mm -hmm. There's so many layers here, Nate. Um, when you were crafting American skin, uh, walk us through, you know, why you wanted to uh, show so many different layers of what people are dealing with in reality right now. Well, really, my, my goal was to attempt to, to capture our experience in this country and not from the standpoint of what is uh, top of mind, whether it being, you know, being a, a, you know, a ball player or entertainer or something that you could watch for entertainment value and keep it moving. I kind of wanted to put us in a position where people could feel represented, um, you, you know, in, in Ralph Ellison's Invisible Man, he said when a people feel feels invisible long enough, they will lash out at the world to let the world know they exist. You know, and when we talk about, you know, the frustrations and the, and the justified rage of our people, we usually don't talk about it within the context of our tenure in this country. You know, the first thing you talked about was policing in this country. Anyone that, that is reading the books uh, and knows our history and knows the history of the police knows this fracture uh, between us and, and law enforcement started on the plantation. You know, they would then call the patrollers or the patty rollers. And uh, that's where our patrols came from when they would control the block or the plantation. When you know that is our beginning, then it's no wonder where we are right now, these years later, we haven't called that out. We haven't dealt with that. We're just living the trauma of that of that situation. You know, when you think of, of how we so many of us have served all the way, I mean, our ancestors, we've served since the Revolutionary War. We've been involved in every single uh, step of the freedom of this country. Yet and still, when we talk about, you know, coming home from World War II, fighting against Nazi Germany, then being lynched in our uniforms. Again, the fractured relationship is connected to our history in this country. When you talk about coming home and him not being able to get work, you know how many people in my family, you know, and, and that's the conundrum, right? It's like, I have aunts, I have uncles, so many relatives that have served, served proudly. You know, I remember them coming to my school in the hood you know, who can do the most pull-ups? You get to stop by and then they're like, come serve. You know, and you go, you know, my, my, my family served, they come back and I see, you know, wh where they are. I see the position that they, that they were in when I was growing up. So it's really, I've taken all of the, the experience that I've felt. And again, this is just, I'm just a filmmaker. You know, Nina Simone says the artist's job is to reflect the times. I just wanted to reflect our experience in this country in a way that created a dialogue that could provide context, that could provide accountability, and ultimately really push us to change the narrative ourselves. So Nate, what's the timeline of the idea for the film, when mm -hmm. it was done, and then obviously of course the timing of it coming on coming out now when you know this problem's always been here but it may be more in people's faces than it had been and more eyeballs are open to mm -hmm. to this struggle that's been there forever. Mm -hmm. Take us through the timeline for you in this movie. Well, I'm going to keep it real. It's it's more in the faces of 
of white people, of, of people who, whom this is not their experience day to day. Yeah. But, you know, I, I've been to New York more times than I can count. And I can remember specifically, maybe maybe it was seven years ago, I was with my, my mentor, Brian Favors. We're driving down Martin Luther King in Brooklyn, and a car just, one car just drove in front of us, stopped us. Dudes jumped out of the cars with guns in our face, screaming. And, you know, in that situation, you can't even hear what they're saying. And I, my hands up, whatever. They look, look in the car. Put their guns away. Don't say, I'm sorry. Don't, nothing. Just get in the car and drive off. And I looked to, to be, I was like, what? And excuse my language, what the F was that? He was like, oh, that's normal. And we just kept it moving. You know, this is our everyday experience. And it's not just the South. You know what I mean? Like, if we want to talk about, you know, we talk about Dr. King, let's talk about the Two Americas speech. Yep. New York has two Americas. There's that's two right. New York. There's two Chicago's. This is not the South. There are two Detroit's. The two LA's, two Phillies, two Phillies, and anyone that's there that lives, you know, George Floyd every day, knows that that's our every day. You know, when I made this film, you know, uh, the inspiration for this film came when I when I got custody of my nephew. My nephew was going to school in Portsmouth, Virginia, in a broken school. We could have a whole conversation about the school systems in America and how they affect us. But he was, you know, in a broken school, and you know, my sister hit me up and said, you know, I need help. His father was in prison. Brought him here to, uh, to California with me. And, you know, I'm thinking, all right, cool. He's going to be in an affluent neighborhood, community school. He's going to be okay. But it didn't take long for me to realize he'd gone out of the frying pan into the fire. Because now he's riding his bike to this, you know, this white neighborhood going to, to his school. And I remember Michael Brown uh, was murdered. And we're watching CNN. And my nephew's sitting next to me. And, you know, we're all upset. And we're watching the bloated body in the street. Uh, and my nephew turns to me and says, Uncle Nate, you know, what do I do if, uh, if I get pulled over by the police on my bike? And the interesting thing is, you know, I've been involved in so many, you know, protests and, 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 and I pride myself on what I, you know, my, my fighting hard for my people and act my actions work. But here I found myself telling my nephew, all right, well, first thing you do is just call me. I'll come there. I'll straighten it out. Then I'm like, don't reach for your phone, nephew. Uh, just slow down on your bike, slow as you can. As soon as you can get your feet down, make eye contact with the officer. Put your hands up so he can see your 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 your, your humanity. He can see that you're your your baby face. You're not a threat. You know, I just I just you know, yes sir, no. And I'm looking at him, and he's looking at me, traumatized. Like what? Like that? That is your answer to me? Um, and I felt embarrassed. I felt shame that I brought my nephew, you know, to to a situation I thought was better. Uh, but fail to recognize that no matter where he is in America, no matter what he's wearing, what school he's going to, the education, uh, he can, he can have his life snatched in a moment. And that's, we live right miracle to miracle every day as black people. If we can wake up, go handle our business and make it home without interacting with some situation that can take our life or strip our humanity, we've won, you know, and we, and we, and we in our, our context of seeing law enforcement, is kind of seen through the lens of, I hope that doesn't happen to me. Mm -hmm. We're attacking citizens. So you what know? year so, was this that you got your nephew? I got my nephew, uh, it would have. It was the year uh, Michael Brown died. I want to get that year, he was at? 2014? 14, yeah. Like and, and let me tell you something, he was 13 years old at the time, testing to the fifth grade as an eighth grader coming out of that school, right? Uh, now he goes to USC, he's in the MFA wow. program, right? But where would Trayvon be? You know what I'm saying? My nephews, all of our nephews and our sons, our little brothers, sisters too, when it comes down to it. So I, li I lived, he lived in this house and I feared for his life every day. So that's when I started writing, you know, the idea of, man, you know, at first I'm gonna write a think piece, I started writing. Then I was like, you know what? We don't have the, we talk about the conversation between law enforcement and our community, but we don't have the conversation. When it's time to have the conversation, you know what we do? Or well, not we, but America, you know what America does? They, they, they show video, they send the news camera to the barbecue that they had in the hood and there's a couple cops there and there's a barbecue and everything's good. jumping rope or playing basketball or something. Exactly, exactly. And then, and then when one of our, 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 you know, our brothers, sisters, 
get killed, what do they do? They put on Instagram and you got a white cop crying with a little black kid and everybody's like, oh, that's cool, that's sweet. And, and, and so you play some of this stuff out in American Skin, right? So yeah. um, without yeah. giving away the whole thing, I mean, look, um, in the trailer and we'll get to your military background and your boys, uh, yeah. you know, basically storming a police station and taking police hostage in this film. Um, and right. that plays out in the trailer slightly, but also um, people should know that the, the 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 scenario you just described of your nephew is in this film in the in the context that your son in the film right is going to a school in a neighborhood where he's not from because you as the father took a job as a janitor after That's being right. a US marine said to get my son out of the hood cuz mm -hmm. i can't afford a crib in these neighborhoods right. right i'm going to become a janitor at one of these schools so that my mm -hmm. son can go to the school. That's right. And because he had a friend in this new neighborhood, you and your son, after you picked your son up from a friend's house, are driving home and get profiled. That's right. Which leads us down to where the rest of the film goes. Right. Um, and I believe in the trailer, I mean, it's pretty clear that your son is shot by police. Yeah, that's right. Um, uh, Which leads to a bunch of other things. But... You're telling me that that building out that scenario mm -hmm. was inspired by your nephew and the reality right. that a not only was he coming from a broken school from the neighborhood he was in, but because mm -hmm. he was now in a neighborhood where he quote unquote didn't belong because of his American skin. That's right. Um, now he's in a another precarious situation. That's right, and and that is the reality for so many of us. You know how many of our mothers or aunties scrub floors so we can be in a, in a nice neighborhood or took some job or had to drive extra far so we could go play ball somewhere in a neighborhood where we could be safe uh, and have a better opportunity. And, and I literally lived that with my nephew, you know? So, and this was in, you know, in, in, in the film, wrote the film, shot the film early 2019. You know, so when this film was made, you know, I had no money to do it, I had no time to do it, but I knew, I just wanted to add to the conversation again, this. This is just a, a film when it comes to the art of it. You know, I'm not, it's not the solution. I'm not, you know, the hero. Uh, all I want to do is contribute to a conversation that you all are having every single day uh, as journalists. You know, um, I just felt like if, if we don't do something differently, you know, if the next 10 years, like the last 10 years, where will we be? You know, I hear a lot of people evoking King. You know, when in King's famous speech, where do we go from here? He says, like, if we're going to talk about where we go from here, we have to be honest about where we are right now, you know? And we are constantly pacified with different things that are distracting us from our reality. And I think that is going to prohibit us from making the type of changes we need to the narrative that are going to make our, our children and, our, and, and our, for that matter, our parents and everyone that looks like us safe. Now, in the film, it's, it's poignant because just January 6th, we saw white Americans mostly, military, police, firemen, doctors, teachers who felt right. like they were done wrong. They were told they were done wrong by the person they voted for, Donald Trump. They mm -hmm. felt like they were done wrong. They took matters into their own hands mm -hmm. and stormed the U.S. Capitol. Mm -hmm. Now, you shot this film, I don't know how long ago, um, but it's out now, American Skin. Mm -hmm. It was clearly before January 6th, but in this film, I don't know if it was your character or Mari Hardwick's character who said, why is, oh no, it was you. You was on the yeah. phone with your, your, your son's mother. Yeah, that's right. And that's you were right. saying, why is it always that when it comes to black, black people not getting justice, we're supposed to take it on the cheek and the other cheek. And I've that's seen right. it with my own eyes. When white people get done wrong or need to protect their families, they take matters into their own hands and they go get their justice. I believe I'm mm -hmm. paraphrasing. I don't know if it, if I'm saying it right, right. but that was right. the, 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 that happens in this film and we just saw it and we're also watching right now. So that that's, that's ill. And we're also to. watching right now, the government, the federal government, the people who can convict these people saying, we need unity. Right. We need to move forward. Mm -hmm. Almost afraid to convict these people of conspiring mm -hmm. against the federal government. That's right. 
But if and we all know, even even Biden said, if this would have been black folks, we already know what would have happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and it speaks to the title. Right. What is what is American skin? What does an American skin look like? You know, um, if, if, if we know that if we you know, of course, there would have been blood on the on the on the lawn. There's blood on the street every day. You know, the question is, what does it mean to have an American skin? to have American skin, because obviously those that insurrection, the looting and the vandalism that happened on the six, uh, in my opinion, is is emblematic of the double standards we live with every day. You know, I, obviously, uh, we know police do have restraint because they showed it on the six. You know what I mean? So something Brian, my, my mentor always says, he says, I'm not so concerned about how white people see us. I'm more concerned about how we've been conditioned to see ourselves. At some point, we have to ask ourselves, what are we gonna to do to change the narrative? We can't constantly, you know, rest our, 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 all of our hopes and dreams on this long shot idea that somehow America will just wake up one day and say, you know what? We've been wrong all along and we wanna give away some of our privilege to create equity. Um, I don't think that that should be the approach. And I don't think that's what, <laughs> what King wanted. You know, I just keep bringing up King because I've seen a lot of posts. Well, yeah, the, of, the, 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 of, uh, the birthday was observed love. the other day. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I see a lot of, uh, only hate, you know, hate can't drive out love and, you know, but what I don't hear is, you know, he said no Lincoln, Lincolnian emancipation proclamation can bring about the type of freedom that we need. It must be asserted by ourselves. We must assert our own manhood and womanhood. We know about Tulsa. We're in the hundredth year. A hundred years ago, Tulsa burned. Those people were snatched out of their house, houses, killed, right? And they looted the whole, all of Greenwood, looted it. And dropped what a bomb on it. Who was flying them planes? Listen, a hundred years ago? We're 1921, May 31st, right? White people surrounding Greenwood said we are sick and tired of the growth that is happening in Greenwood, the wealth that is happening in Greenwood, the bank, all, the cars, we're tired of them shining. We're about to take that. And they went in, they ripped people from their homes, they dropped bombs, only time in history bombs were, I only bring it up because it's 100 years ago. We saw an insurrection, we saw riots and looting. When they got all of the men in the and in, 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 took everyone, out into the uh, fairgrounds, all the town people lined up. This is fact. And the police said, all right, go. And you know what they did? They ran into Greenwood and they looted the entire town. They took pianos. They took <laughs> curtains off the wall, everything. cars, everything. So this is not new. I, I, we have to stop approaching this behavior, one, like it's a new phenomenon, and, and two, like it's isolated to a few people. If we're going to talk about politics, let's talk about how close the margin was. This is not just a couple folks in a way of thinking. I really right. think that this this is a this is a, 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 a nationwide ideology that we're that we're fighting against. And if it, if, it, it, if 20 million, if 20 million are his base, the, the, the fervent crazies we saw on Capitol Hill, yeah. the other 54 were good with it. Were. They were all good with it. They they might sit there and say, oh, I don't agree with the behavior. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Yeah. So I'm glad you and brought that up because 1921 is not that long ago, Nate. And that behavior, you telling me the people we saw on January 6th wouldn't do the same thing right now in a Greenwood in, in 2021? Of course they Let's would. Go. Of course they would. And guess what? <laughs> we, the police were involved back then. Just like know, they were now. Just like they were now. And again, I'm not, this is an indictment on the justice system. This is an indictment on our, on our way of life and the things that we should and should not tolerate, right? Like I'm not, look, I'm no savior. I'm just an artist. I just think we have to be honest about where we are. That's it. You know, genuine healing requires honest confrontation. We got to be honest about where, where we are, you know? And, and, and so again, not, not to take it into to, to politics, but when we're talking about the film American Skin, this is a man that said, okay, I'm not getting justice. I, try, I, I tried to wait it out and, and to see if they would do the right thing, and they didn't. 
what kind of father? One of the lines that he says, not to give anything away, but you know, when he when he realizes that he just sat there and did nothing, just the self hate that he had for himself as a, as a father and as a man. You know what I mean? Um, and to, and to see how it affected his 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 ex wife. You know what I mean? Like the the pain that Tamir Rice's mother's feeling right now. You know what I mean? Khalif Browder, like. His family is their mourning right now. It's 926 in New York. 926 right now. They don't have to be listening to this. They're mourning the loss. You know? So until in my opinion, my humble opinion, if we don't do anything differently, then this will be a timely film 10 years from now. You know? So I, I just, you know, they're like, oh, the film's so timely. Yeah, it was timely. When I got Five my years ago, 10 the, years yeah. ago, 20 the hope years is, ago. The hope is that it's not timely. Right, and you but like, out of date. Yeah, th- exactly. But our hope can't be rooted in in empty ideas. Is all you know what I mean? Like we've been we've been we've taken the hope pill, pill, the empty hope pill. When it's like, yeah, yeah, and people say things like it has to change, right? Because because it has to. Nah, that that if that were the case, we wouldn't be marching for the same things we were marching for 50, 60 years ago. That hope has to be rooted with something. There has to be some teeth in that hope, and I think this is a you know, I mean, there's work, like I said, Black Lives Matter, teeth, color of change, teeth, Brian Stevenson, teeth. There's work that is happening. The journalism y'all do every day. Y'all attacking these issues. That's teeth. We got to put teeth in that hope so we're not giving this to our children. Because you, you, know feel, you know what feels toothless to me right now? What? The, 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 and I appreciate it on some level. I get it. But the corporate backing of, of social change yeah. That to me, while there are some companies that have done real things, it also is dangerous, Nate, because it feels like it can lull you to sleep. That's right. You turn on yeah. the TV and you go, oh, the NFL and the NBA and 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 Hewlett Packard and these companies, they're they're all doing the right thing. Well, that plays yeah. out in the film too, right? In yeah. in um, oh, in American man. Skin, where you know, there's once again not giving away too much of the plot. Don't but, too much. but there's a black police chief mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. who shows up to the you know the the uh, morning mother's home yeah. to ask her yeah to help with the violence think about that your child has been killed by the cops the cops have the audacity to come ask you to help them quell the violence going on in the street that is happening because uh-huh. people are angry because your child got killed. That just happened in Kenosha, which is the family all the fucking all the time. time. Yeah, all the time. That's and it. why? Why just... is it on the families when the violence is happening because of the officers in uniform not yep. being held accountable for their fucking actions? How do you? Right. How could you turn and yep. go, yo, go get the mom? And, and what? And what does the character say? Is diabolical, right? Is diabolical. These are systems, bro. And and look, nothing in this country, specifically at the political level, is designed to change quickly, right? This shit takes time, right? So rather than say, we have to do the real work, we have to roll up our sleeves to do the work to break these systems, you know, like a bone that's out of place, break it, it's going to hurt, set it so we can heal. That's the hard work. And, wh- and why would they do it if we're not demanding them to? Why would they? You know what I'm saying? Like, who do you know that is willing to give up privilege just because it's the right thing to do in any in, in, across any line mm-hmm. of any business or any lifestyle. No one's just going to give up privilege. Not if, not if you can get the people you are pressing to just pacify themselves. Why are you going to do that hard work? You get what I'm saying? This is our every day. But the question remains, what are we going to do differently? As a people, you're talking to a dude that has to imagine this. Let me tell you the life of a filmmaker. Filmmaker, nine, 99 times out of 100, if they want to make a film, right, about social justice, something dealing with our issues, about taking back power, right, about breaking systems, right, about dealing with subjugation, intimidation, all these things we deal with, you know what we have to go to? White, white people. A lot of times the people that oppress us or represent that oppression. If I, if, to, to, we gotta go, I got to go to Knoxville and, excuse me, how you doing? I want to make a film about this because I think it's important. Will you give me money. the money so I can make a film 
that ex- that that will exploit this situation and and hopefully create an equity that may take power from people that look like you. Mm-hmm. Who, who's what? It's counterintuitive, but we do it every day. We see it in when we're working for people that we know are not for us. We do it when we. When we and, oh, and, and again, I'm I'm just a guy, man. I'm just a guy trying to trying to make art, trying to live in this legacy moment and contribute to the conversation. Well, and so shake we the table to, a little bit. You got to shake. You yeah, shaking the you table. You got to shake it a little bit. Why? Because guess what? We are gonna need our receipts, bro. Yeah. We are gonna need our receipts when we're on our deathbed. And if we're blessed, we're surrounded by you know different generations we've been a part of, children, grandchildren, great grandchildren, whatever. And they looking at us asking, so. <laughs> What were you doing when? Or what are you leaving us with? Mm-hmm. We got to have our receipts. You know what I'm saying? At some point in the name of God, we got to have our receipts. Because all, all the stuff we had ain't going to matter. All the stuff we, the funds we had or the, 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 the laughs we had, I don't think it's going to matter. It's not going to hit the same when we're, when we're laying down there hoping that we just contribute to a conversation, you know, and, and actions around our freedom. The In the film, uh, there's uh, a youth uh, element, not just yeah. the, the your son, uh, who you know the the kid who portrays your son in the film being killed, but also some kids who are uh, trying to learn about you as the father of this son who was killed. And they're mm-hmm. filming a documentary. Mm-hmm. Um, right. One of the kids who's the filmmaker uh, ends up having a monologue scene, right, um, in the police station. Mm-hmm. That is one of the most powerful articulations of, you know, uh, what youth and a, a young person who comes from his background of not coming from the hood and not really knowing the particulars of growing up in a, uh, 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 I guess a, I'll call it a targeted neighborhood, et cetera, et cetera, but understanding because he's also black. Right. I need that monologue, bro, for the Instagram. People need to see yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I need that I cut out of there because it doesn't give away the whole storyline. But that scene, that kid, and the decision he makes speaks to what you just talked about with the receipts. Mm-hmm. That's right. Because That's he right. makes a conscious decision in that moment that right. he knows is important for black people. That's right. That's and I think it's important, bro, for us to recognize that young people got it. All the young people that can hear my voice, we are we are counting on you. We are supporting you. You know, I'm 41. It's not it's not mine anymore. I'm gonna keep doing my part the best I can do my part. Keep supporting these young folks. You know, I got, you know, the Nate Parker Foundation that we we empower young people to tell their stories. But that's what, you know, the, the character of Jordan and Kai, his young brother and sister and their little camera crew, uh, they go in with one idea, thinking they're just going to follow a man who's grieving and find themselves in the heart of the situation. <laughs> but they get to see step by step this entire situation unfold. A lot of times, We'll go to young people and we'll project our ideas on them and we'll we'll soapbox them, right? We'll be like, look, you gotta do this, because this, this, this. We marched in 19, whatever. They're not trying to hear that. They want to experience this society, they want to experience the environment for themselves. And they and they can see, we saw it in the way they they reacted to the George Floyd situation. They 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 got an energy that we don't have, a stamina stamina that we don't have. We're just getting up there, you bro. And so I think it's important, and I and I told them when I hired this actor. You know, I took him out to lunch, and this was before the script was done. I was, I was, I was work, still working on the script. I was writing it in that monologue. I brought him in. I said, "Young bro, I'm gonna do for you what someone did for me. We'll put you in a position, position where you're the star of this show. This is your movie. This character, Lincoln Jefferson, and we can get to that name. But Lincoln Jefferson is a man, a grieving man that's pushed to the point where he decides he's gonna do something about it. But it's gonna be your job as this character to capture this and bring this to the world." And he showed up. That young actor, Shane Paul McGee, he showed up. All yeah. of them, you know, everyone showed up. Yeah, he brought it home. Um, the name Lincoln Jefferson struck me, um, and I don't know if it struck me because I know you, or because <laughs> if it would have struck me if, as just viewing the film. Yeah. But um, what was your intention in having a U.S. Marine veteran named mm-hmm. Lincoln Jefferson? Um, as the uh, you know main character in the film, why that name? Uh, because it's ironic, you know. Um, so often, you know, we forget that our names aren't our own. Maybe you, Ebro, you know what I'm saying. But a lot of our names aren't our, are our own. I'm Nathaniel Parker. 
You know what I mean? Like these names, where did they come from? We were brought here, we were stripped of everything and we were tag branded and we have kind of run with these, these ideas of what uh, 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 pe people projected on us. And in a vacuum, right? I mean, we're just, even just being able to, to, to convene is a new thing for black people, right? And we forget those things. And I know people named after Lincoln. I know people named after, and, and for me, the, the Lincoln of it as a first name spoke to Abraham Lincoln, you know? And when we evoke Lincoln, we like, he freed the slaves because he knew it was wrong. Not if you read really. you read books, you, know, really. <laughs> you read books, you, you'll know that brother Frederick Douglass had a big say, he put mad pressure on him. Lincoln didn't want to, Lincoln was like, how do I get around this in a way that I can keep them happy and Save well, and Abraham Lincoln was quoted as believing that black people were not we're on the same level as white folks. We can keep it real if we're keeping it real. And Jefferson, if we know, he said, indeed, I tremble when I think that God is just and that his justice can't sleep forever. Mm. Yet we named after him. There's 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 a, a it's like a d domestic relationship, like our relationship with America as black people and the trauma that we that we're constantly having to undergo within the context of being named after these heroes that never intended these words that they wrote and these things that they signed for our people. That's to me, the, the irony that we, that, that is being American and black and having this American skin. So I, I wanted to be very intentional about his name. You know, if, if, and we, the more you learn about Jefferson, the, the more, the more, you know, that he wasn't for us as well. These four fathers we claim. You know, so I just think there has to be a restructuring of our perspective on what this country was designed to do. I've heard it said many times, you know, this country isn't broken. You know, the justice system isn't broken. It's doing what it's designed to do, mm -hmm. you know. And, and, and again, I'm not coming here to give all the solutions. I don't have all the solutions, you know. I'm just the guy that's giving you art and trying to do my job as an artist and say, look, here's where we are. Here's who we are. Now I'm going to go over here and make another movie, you know, humbly, respectfully. I'm just a guy that's that's trying to remind us of, of where we are. So as we as we 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 we, we chart our path forward, we can do though do so within proper context of who we are and where we are in this country. Well, and and even deeper than that, uh, in this film, one of the things I took from the name Lincoln Jefferson was that black folks, many 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 black folks, are mm -hmm. trying to do exactly what they've been told works in America. Mm -hmm. Go to school, work hard, mm -hmm. do your job, and everything will, the American dream can be yours. That's right. And here you have a man who served the military, is working hard despite all the obstacles, is a janitor so his kid can go to a better school, mm -hmm. and still, yet and still, profiled by the police, and his son is murdered in right. front of him. And there's so there's so much in there because even there's a, a scene uh, where you challenge one of the police officers about public school mm -hmm. um, and about the fact that the police officer is like, I, I, don't, I, send my kid, I don't send my kid to a public school. And you're like, well, if there's nothing wrong with public schools and there's nothing wrong yeah. with the schools that black people go to, why wouldn't you send your kids there? That's right. Yeah. And that's a and, real, and, con real comment, it, the realist. When I ask those questions, bro, it's on us. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's, and they, and, and we are desperately trying to flee our own schools. You know, when I got, when I even took my nephew, it's, 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 there's so much to it. When I took my nephew, I had to sit him down and explain him. I was like, listen, bro, I was like, you're not better than any of the, the brothers and sisters you just left. You know, you're you're blessed enough to be put in a position to to be able to achieve your goals and go back and make sure you can have an impact on the lives of the people you left. And that's a hard conversation to have, right? Like so many people, we play, we do, we we they got us playing the lottery. We're doing the lottery to get our kids in good schools yeah. because we know we know the difference. You know, it's it's these it's traumatic. You know, we talk a lot about mental illness as well, right? But we don't talk about how people are driven to that place. We don't talk about how trauma on top of trauma on top of trauma can make a man start thinking things or make a woman start thinking things, you know? Um, and these are hard conversations. And I try to, you know, even with the 
how we go out, the last couple frames of the film. And I won't talk about that, but pay attention, people, please. Please pay attention. When you see just how just how it was at the very, very end, just the, 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 the dialogue that happens, people that are talking and what they're talking about. Like I just I just feel like we 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 have to be intentional about what we're leaning into and how we might use that to form our strategy for survival. You know, a lot of people ask, you know, how can I be helpful? Well, join the fight. You know, our liberation isn't charity. This has to be, you know, completely entrenched in everything we are and everything we do. If not, we're going to hand our kids a, 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 a very similar package to what we were handed. Yeah, Nate Parker's his name. American Skin is the movie. Shout out to Omari, my brother. Yo, Omari. listen, yo, my brother Theo, Theo Rossi. Bro, you kind of played that character too good. We gotta talk. Yo, we got yo. I was I, I I was like, fam, I don't know this side of you, bro. This is yeah. too good. Yeah, and I gotta give a shout out to 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 my cast. You know, you know, Omari. Fantastic, you know, Mo McRae, Theo, you know, Bo Knapp, um, Shane Paul McGee, Milana Jermaine Jackson. Uh, I mean, there, there, there are even more people. One of the things we did also, you know, you look at uh, the returning citizens, the, 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 the inmates, you know, we worked with Scott Budnick and ARC, Anti-Recidivism Coalition, and all of those those people you saw in, in, in orange with the exception yeah. of Mo McRae and another person, they were real returning citizens. Pain wow. the Poet, like these are people that just, a couple of them just got out. Elroy Drew just got just got out of prison. Uh, he had just got out of prison. And as soon as he went back um, to Alabama, within a matter of weeks, his mother called me, said they picked him up trying to get him to, to, to become a snitch. That's what they do. A lot of people don't know what's happening in this country. When it, the prison industrial complex is a whole other thing. But he's back in prison. You know what I mean? And fighting for his life, helping him get a, you know, a lawyer. Because they wanted, to, they wanted to have him roll on somebody. And then they that's what happens once you come out it's like great you got parole great you out now you work for us you get what i'm saying it, yep. and it's happening all the time we can have a whole show on what's happening in prison industrial complex and how that's impacting our brothers as they were and sisters as they return to the streets but you know we had over 220 years represented on this film giving jobs and opportunity to to brothers and sisters that 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 you know had formerly incarcerated our catering company a couple of sisters that came out, you know, started their own company. So it's like, you know, we, we were able to employ so many people, fantastic actors, but also, you know, there were times we turned the cameras off or kept the cameras rolling, the call cut and just had a dialogue, you know, and the extras on the DVD come out, you'll see that. And you had the extras contributing to the conversation, the actors, and we just talking because the pain was real. We'd be doing the work and people would just start crying. We'd be like, All right, time to take a break. <laughs> and we would just start talking about how people were feeling. You know, it's important that we engage in this dialogue in an honest way. I think there's healing in that. I think there's healing for everybody that participating to participates in that. We break down these walls that that divide us. You know, and uh, you know, a lot of these cops, these they shoot people, leave, and they get the get their you know, superiors, whatever. They come back with their story. There's no humanity in that. We're not able to talk. You know what I mean? So there are a lot of things that happen in this. Again, it's it's, it's you know, it's a piece of art, but I just I hope it contributes to the conversation in a way that we can tangibly move forward. And again, it's where we are for now. You know, it's it's not a fantasy, it's where we are. Yeah, according to what, you know, my research and what I'm seeing. Nate Parker, American Skin, you can get it everywhere. I checked it on Amazon Prime. I encourage you to do so. Listen, I'll be honest, Nate, I stay away from some of these films. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? I, I, I watched this because you're my brother and I knew people in it. But a lot of times these films come out and I'm already on this page so much that in right. my free time, it's just right. me and my lady and my family, you know, <laughs> trying to like keep keep dad chill. Like, you know, cause you know, I go on my on my thing and with everything going on, but it's definitely worth the watch. You know what I mean? And and some of these some of this trauma and emotions for me it gets heavy, but uh mm -hmm. you did a great job, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we can do this, right? Like we watch it. We vent, you know, we can just get on with each other, man. This platform, you know, Hot 97, your, your, your show, it gives us a space where we can we can emote, you know, where we can talk through things. You know, I've talked to brothers that was like, yo, I watched it and I haven't cried in years. You know what I mean? That's okay. You know, our rage is justified. Our anger and frustration is justified. Our tears are justified, you know? So I think we need these moments so we don't bottle all that up inside 
and then find ourselves in a situation where we're dealing with law enforcement and now we're now we lit and now it's over. You know, so I think it's important. The healing is important. And this is healing for, for a lot of people. So I appreciate y'all. Of course. Nate Parker, Thank man. You, Nate. Good to see you, man. Keep going. Congrats, bro. You, bro. All right, bro. All right, man. Y'all. Peace.